Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word today, we're in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 10. I want to share verses 6 through 11 with you. And then let's talk just for a, a few minutes today about the, the importance of extricating idols from our lives. If you would, hear the word of the Lord. Lord, there is no one like you, for you are great and your name is full of power. Who would not fear you, O King of nations? That title belongs to you alone. Among all the wise people of the earth and in all the kingdoms of the world, there is no one like you. People who worship idols are stupid and foolish. The things they worship are made of wood. They bring beaten sheets of silver from Tarshish and gold from Euphaz. And they give these materials to skillful craftsmen to make their idols. Then they dress these gods, lowercase g, in royal blue and purple robes made by expert tailors. But the Lord is the only true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. The whole earth trembles at His anger. The nations cannot stand up to His wrath. Say this to those who worship other gods. Your so-called gods, who did not make the heavens and the earth, will vanish from the earth and from under the heavens. Well, I'm I'm, uh, just so glad that we human beings as a race have developed so far beyond this to where we would never look to um, things made of wood and metal, things expertly crafted and tailored, We'd never look to things like that to get what only God can truly give us. And well, of course, I'm being facetious, but John Calvin said, I I think, said it best of all. He's one of the great leaders of the Protestant Reformation. He said, from this we may gather that man's nature, so to speak, is a perpetual factory of idols. You know, we tend to think of idols as sort of a, a primitive thing, and, and it's true. We today, I think, are much more subtle about our idolatry, but friends, we are still making idols. We're still making replacements, false replacements for God. There are things that we feel we could just not do without. There are things that we look to in order to gain meaning and purpose, significance, our identity. We uh, set our lives after the pursuit, the pursuit of, of idols because, well, they, we think that they're going to give us what our souls deeply need, what our souls deeply long to have. And yet we find, as Pastor Tim Keller says, and he says this in his book, Counterfeit Gods, he says, if we look to some created thing to give us the meaning, hope, and happiness, that only God can give, it will eventually fail to deliver and break our hearts. It seems to me that we can identify our idols by what we are looking to for significance, what we are giving our lives to, our time, our energy. And, and I know that, that so, you know, some will say, and it's, a, and it's a good question, well, you know, what about my work? I have to work, I have to make a living, I have to do this and that. How can I be focused on, on God all of the time and not these other things? And, and, and listen, I, I understand, but, but there is a, a truth, there is a reality, and we, we find it in a couple places in the New Testament that we can actually do everything to the glory of God. We can do everything with our focus on the Lord. Whatever you do, we read in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 31, do it all for the glory of God. Very similar statement in Colossians chapter 3 and and verse 17. And this will be the test is why is it that we are doing what we're doing? Why why do we live? Why do we work? What is our purpose? Anything but God, friends, will fall far short of the longing of our souls. What is it that we're looking for for our joy, for the satisfaction of our souls? Only the Lord can satisfy our souls. Those who come to Him, Jesus says, 
They won't be thirsty. They won't be hungry. He will satisfy our souls as with a rich feast. It is only in God. And, and friends, the urgency to identify in these idols is that, that truly we, we empty our lives of the purpose and the meaning and the, the joy that, that we're meant to have in the Lord as we focus on Him, as we seek first His kingdom. And, and so, friends, let's identify our idols. We all have them. Our, our hearts are always trying to make idols. Let us keep our eyes fixed on the Lord because it truly life is only found in Him. And may it be so in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.